Around 13,000 BC, a flood tore across North America. It wasn't just a flood. It was a wave of water carrying more volume than every single river on Earth today combined, times 10. It carved canyons in days, left waterfalls and no river to feed them, and scarred the landscape so deeply it's visible from space. For decades, the evidence was dismissed as impossible. So, what really happened? In the 1920s, geologist J. Harlan Bratz proposed a single, catastrophic flood. The scientific establishment ridiculed him. They believed all geology was the result of slow, gradual processes. A cataclysm of this scale was considered fantasy. But Bretz followed the evidence, and today, thanks to satellite imagery and decades of research by the U.S. Geological Survey, his controversial theory is now accepted fact. Let's look at what he saw. Bretz documented bizarre features that slow geology could not explain. First, there were giant ripple marks, some 50 feet high and hundreds of feet apart, etched not in sand, but into the bedrock itself. What kind of water flow leaves ripples the size of buildings? Then there were the erratic boulders, rocks the size of houses, native to the mountains of Montana and Canada, scattered across Washington. No known river could move them. Bretz argued only one force could, icebergs, carried on a flood of imaginable power. So where did all this water come from? At the end of the last ice age, a finger of the Cordillian ice sheet crept south and dammed the Clark Fork River in what is now Montana. Behind this 2,000-foot-tall wall of ice, water backed up, forming glacial Lake Missoula, an inland sea holding as much water as Lake Erie and Lake Ontario combined. When the pressure became too great, the ice dam failed. The entire lake emptied in as little as 48 hours. This raises a critical question. Were people there to see it? For a long time, it was assumed humans hadn't arrived yet, but the Cooper's Ferry archaeological site in Idaho changes that. It's dated to at least 14,000 BC, placing people directly in the region at exactly the right time. What would have they witnessed? The evidence is overwhelming. A scarred landscape visible from orbit. A waterfall three times wider than Niagara, with no water. Ripple marks 50 feet high. Boulders moved hundreds of miles. And confirmed human presence right on the doorstep of the flood zone. Geologists now believe this cycle of damming and flooding happened dozens of times over s several thousand years. The channeled scablands are more than a geological curiosity. They're the physical memory of a genuine apocalypse, an event that would have wiped the landscape clean. It's no surprise that oral traditions of regional tribes like the Sayish and the Kootenai tell of a time when the world was scoured by a great flood. It raises the question, are the countless flood myths from around the world simply stories? Or are they the faded memories of real events like this one? That's it for today's video, folks. See you next time, right here on Documentify TV.